think we have I think black women had the lowest standards of all women. But how do they treat you though? Treating you like a nigga. Okay. <laughs> Treating you like you are trying to use a white only water fountain, baby. <laughs> baby. Mm. These are West African body types. You go over to Africa, then women be wrapped up in fabric looking like queens and stuff. Mm-hmm. You go over to India with all mm-hmm. this body. Baby, they might worship you. <laughs> right. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Listen up. Listen up. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. And I hear this a lot when women especially are on panels with men. I think we have, I think black women had the lowest standards of all women. We don't expect our men to marry us. And then we try to compromise our way out of there. Like, well, you know, it's just a piece of paper. If he, we don't expect our mm. men to pay for anything. I mean, well, you know, just as long as he got a job and he got a place, you know, like even if he's sharing it with somebody else, because I mean, rents are high out here. Like right. we give our men, our men every chance and excuse to just slum and be the bottom of the barrel. We've gotten so bad about it that they're starting to put it back on us. Like, well, y'all the one the pookies and the ray rays and y'all and it's like yeah, okay y'all ask y'all saying we gold diggers get a man a chance then we get a man a chance and then yep. y'all tell us we should have chose but it's no winning with the black man I've come to that realization it's narcissism it's yeah you're it's, dealing with it is it is see that's why it's I no did, winning with the black man it's that's just why not. I did the panel though because you're dealing with a same sex relationship you're because if you're submissive with the they you know look at you as weak but if you're too assertive you're trying to be the man and wear the pants bro what do you want what what do you want me it's to? women that are fickle like that it's like what do you want to eat i don't know okay well let's have some mexican i don't want mexican why you i did i just asked you what did you want exactly even if you don't know what you want give me a list of what you don't want so that i can choose from whatever's left what do you what do you want to eat? I don't know. Like women are like that, but yeah. I, unfortunately, I mean, I think from just so many generations of being raised by women that they now hate. I'm convinced they hate their mamas too, honey. That that they they've taken on those characteristics now. They the prize. They don't have to work. They don't. So and my thing is, and I know because they're like you can't generalize. That ain't all, but it's enough it's because enough. our community wouldn't it's look enough. like it does if it was. If it was an isolated incident, right, all communities right. of men have ain't shit men. All of them, tons oh, yeah. of them. Oh yeah. I hold my oh, yeah. my curb out here be lined with Modelo beer cans, um, and black men don't drink Modelo. So right. I mean, they just throw them out there. So it's trash in every oh, culture. Oh yeah. yeah. But you know, uh, them rehab clinics full of white men that's on methamphetamines and opioids yeah. and all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. But they hold community not in shambles though. Mm-hmm. They hold community. It it could be. 1.2 million white men in rehab right now, but it ain't gonna stop nothing about America, the economy, the home buying market, or none of that because they gonna stay getting to some money and getting to a bag. They gonna stay on the moon like Jeff Bezos and um and Elon Musk. They gonna stay owning Tesla stock. They gonna stay doing that regardless of whether they got a drug problem on their fifth wife or whatever. They do not let nothing stop them getting to their money. And I'm just tired of hearing black men say, "Well, we would be men if y'all women would submit to us." Like we have been submitted to y'all. Yeah, that's we how have. We got, that's how we got crack all in the community because y'all was selling it to the community. You know what I'm saying? Every every black capitalist that we know got their money either by selling crack to their community, mm. glorifying selling crack to their community, mm. or by putting niggas in prison. Because that's where Michael Jordan and all them getting their money from. Them hedge funds that fund. Uh, private prisons privatizing medical care and all this different stuff they capitalizing off the whole country and putting everybody black white blue green in poverty but mm. them them black men will put their money right in the pot with them if they think it's going to make them some more money 
You know, and that's the sad mm-hmm. part because we as black women feel like we being sold by our men. We being, but it's been that. It's been that all the way since Martin Luther King and all them marches, Sydney Poitier, all them was with white women. It's been. Well, not Martin, not Martin Luther King. Oh, yes. you said time frame. Yes, yes, him. Oh well, he cheated. Oh, he, well, he, you know, baby. So he cheated with a white woman. All of them. He been, his first girlfriend was white. That was the reason why he wanted all these civil rights in the first place. Was because he had taken up with a white woman and they couldn't, you know, continue their relationship. That's where the damn dream was born. And the only reason why he <laughs> married Coretta Scott King, but ain't nothing just going on here. But the oh. only reason why. <laughs> The only reason why he married Coretta Scott King was because he was being funded by white liberal white liberals that was funding the integration movement because they still needed black bodies to work in their factories and work on their plantations. Mm. They said to him, listen, the black community not going to accept you with a white wife. He wanted to marry a white woman. So they went out and found him the brightest, closest, the white thing that they could to marry. And all he did was cheat on her the whole entire time. The whole entire time? The whole entire time. They got all them wiretaps of him tapping that ass. Yeah, Yeah, I thought it was once. Oh, wow. Baby, anything that come to light been going on. Wherever there's smoke, it's been a fire. Tabby daddy. Baby daddy. Mm. <laughs> Civil rights dick. Child, no. Listen, there is a certain sector of white women that have always been reserved for being nigger traps. Mm. For, but that's what it is because if you can give a black man some money, a pork chop sandwich, and some white women, you can compromise him. He'll sell you. He listen. It's crazy because we seen that same dichotomy, that same dynamic. It's really the power of a woman all the way around the board, but we as black women have not been allowed to embrace that same power. Mm-hmm. Because you remember Harlem Nights when old dude get with Sunshine mm-hmm. and he call his wife on the phone and be like, Hey, yes. hey, put your mama on the phone. Hey Barbara, look it. I ain't never coming home no more. Listen, for the right wop. <laughs> you heard what Cardi B said. She said, I don't cook. I don't clean, but I tell you how I got this ring. That's why they put all these stipulations on the black woman. What do you bring to the table? What do you? Why don't you? You never. Y'all don't. Y'all over what? Y'all. Uh. Uh-uh. When a man really want a woman, baby, he don't care if she can cook, if she can yeah. clean. He don't care if she got toes. He don't care. <laughs> he don't care about none of that. He right. just want to be with that particular woman. That's why you have these women from these other communities coming over here and capitalizing on black men's wealth, on the wealthy black men, because mm-hmm. that's all that it takes for them to sell out, not just the black woman, but they whole entire, complete, utter community. But it, it, but it just goes back to what you said. They getting the same man. Khloe Kardashian, Tristan Cheated on her the entire time. So, they ain't winning. But see, that's just it. That's not the point. That's not the point. The point is not to win. The point is to cash out. <laughs> yes, yes, You have yes, to understand. Yes, that yes. Was, that, these, these men are a lick. They hit the lick. Like these dudes. Oh, that's why she got that um, Miss True. Strippers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cash these out. Definitely. Are lick. They Definitely. Are, they but are they too dumb to see program. that. But see, that's just it. My point and what I'm saying is those women, like when they talk about black women that are over the age of 35 are leftover women, those are the leftover women of the white community. Mm. They already been set aside to hit licks and get money off of black men. That's why you'll hear them moaning at the end of their life about how they never really loved them. And they didn't, because it was always (laughs) about a bag, baby. If they could have got the bag off of a white man instead of a black man, they would have done that instead. But it was always about the bag at the end of the day. That's why I said we as black women are only ones that feel bad when we say a nigga got to pay for a date. I'm on this date nap, right? So I meet this dude and he was like, how do you feel about the 50-50 rule? I'm like, 50-50 rule? You mean like, you mean like, if you treat me good, I treat you good? Like, like, is that like the golden rule? Like, what are you talking about? He was like, no, I mean, since we just dating, like, you pay for yourself and I pay for me. And so I told him straight up, I was like, that's... So when did that start? Because... 
All the dates I've ever been on, the man has paid for me. They don't even bring that up. I've never heard it before either. But that's, I, when did this become? A, I've never heard this either. I don't know when it became a thing. But that's exactly what he said to me. Like I was trolling for a free meal, and I was like, "We can meet in a park. Like it's really not that big of a deal to me." Yeah. But it's sad because. I know for a fact he wouldn't have even brought that up to a white or oh, Latina or his not at all. And that's why I said their need to be impressive and to impress other men and because honestly and I probably get in trouble for saying this, but I think it's a homosexual thing. I honestly think what it is is that men are a I think a lot of black men, and now that being homosexual is so much more acceptable, we're seeing, it seemed like to me, so many more black men embrace that lifestyle because there's no way you can tell me that you are that vexed to impress the next man that you'll go broke to do it. Because we're not even just talking about the women that they choose. These dudes are buying cars to impress other black men. They wearing clothes. They out. There's a man named um, uh, Jawanza Kunjufu. And he was saying how if we took a group of students and we had half the students buy Nikes. And then we had the other half of the students buy Nike stock. And then compare <laughs> how much money, you know, how much value each one of those people had at the end of the day. Who you think will come out on top? Right, the Nike stock. <laughs> so, my point is, you really got niggas trying to impress other niggas with the shoes that they wear when they mm. don't even own the house that they live mm. in. So, clearly, these niggas want to impress other niggas. And then they want us to use our bodies. And our our submissiveness to help them impress other niggas with it, cause when you yep. get, cause when they get home with them spicy Latinas, baby, they be going upside their heads, they be fighting with them, cussing them out. They, baby, I'm gonna tell you, I take me if if it's me, I would take me a black woman before I take a Hispanic woman any day, simply because you are gonna deal with all that pressure out in public with her. You know, mm -hmm. because she's a protected woman. You already dealing with people that don't want to see you in that relationship. You go into mm -hmm. the quinceañera and the family picnics and all that stuff. And they don't want you there. And that is a horrible feeling. You know, I went through that inside of my own black marriage. And not being able to get along with somebody. Oh, I thought you was going to say more. In-laws. That too. But not being able to get along with people in laws and them. How did they? You, but how did they treat you though? Treating you like a nigga, okay? <laughs> treating you like you are trying to use a whites only water fountain, baby. Okay. <laughs> treating you like you are in a whites only lunch counter. And you and you mm. and they say, "Oh, love is love," but you dealing with that in every situation that you go to. Because even if the family, comes, okay, well then let me you're still showing up in places where they're uncomfortable with y'all being there. So, but okay, so with that being said, though, do you still want to date outside? I'm open to it now, but I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to be at Bob's barbecue and his grandma and mama looking at me like I should be picking cotton. I don't want to go to Jose's barbecue and his so i i and would his rather offer you fried chicken <laughs> right I so I, do that. I would rather be with a black man because with you saying that it, i don't know it's okay 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 i got something for you okay. i got something for you yes you are gonna deal with that but i still feel like it's advantageous to the black woman to date out simply yeah, because yeah, yeah, simply because absolutely. them people can look however they want to look Brad and Jose and them still run stuff. They still got money. They still probably going to be around at the end of your life. They not worried if you got stretch marks. They're not, yeah. you know, I still feel like it's advantageous. You're going to be treated better inside the relationship. See, for mm. me, I don't think it's advantageous for black men to date out if you're going to be the same black man. Because yeah. look at Tiger Woods' wife. She found out he was cheating and walked down there and bust his windshield out. They still getting the same response from these women in these other cultures that's so submissive when they do mm. Do them mm -hmm. like they do us. See, they in there telling them, I see, I would never see you not like these nappy headed hoes. You have class and you the one I want to be with. And they're promising these women the world. They going to work for them and doing stuff for them that they wouldn't do for us. But as soon as they start getting that same treatment, you talking about Khloe Kardashian calling Tristan Thomas a liar and all this different stuff. Like, 
No, they like you said, they're getting the same thing. Oh, they're, yeah, he's a liar now because you thought he was going to put you on a pedestal and he treated you just like any other woman, black woman. Treated what? her just like he treated Jordan. Oh. <laughs> the one she took him up off of. But see, my point in what I'm saying is, the Hello. point in what I'm saying mm-hmm. is, they have got to get, we, we as black women have got to get to the point where we understand that because here's the difference between us and Khloe Kardashian is that they could take them lip fillers and them booty fillers out and go right back to their community and still yeah. be taken care of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because look at Courtney Kardashian. She married a uh, old boy, Travis Parker and all that stuff, but she's going to be happy for the rest of her life. Like she ain't going to be dealing with what Khloe and Kim dealing with. But you know, she went through some shit with Scott, but she I went but, through a whole lot of shit with Scott, but that was her choice yeah that was her choice though she still had somebody so you that think was, Courtney, she still had somebody that stayed with her till she had enough yeah. and was in the household with her kids with uh, her so her do kids. you think she strategically chose not to date black men absolutely if you watched all that happening with you Ain't no damn way. I listen. I done mm-hmm. watched how black men been doing for all my life, and that's why I'm like, okay, Brad. Okay, okay. Right. Okay. Right. You know, Brad ain't got no stroke game and stuff. I get it, Dang. but you'd be surprised because Brad be having a big dick sometimes. Mm, I've heard more more than you would think. Mm-hmm. I mean, you gotta ride him and everything because he be off beat, you know. But I'm just saying, you know, me, I, I can ride. I don't know if I can. Guy. I don't know if I can do a Brad, but I could do a 365. I don't know what his name is. The guy on the movie 365, like an Italian type, or I had an Italian one. Yeah, I could do you know top three. Okay, baby, forearm. Okay. <laughs> I had an Italian with that. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. They don't say Italian stallion for nothing. I couldn't even take it out, y'all. I was like, listen. Oh, but also too, I feel like Charlotte don't really have a variety of. That's men. true, and that's why I'm moving to Texas. Yeah. Have I told you? I'm when are you moving? moving to Texas next year? You told me. Okay, I'm buying a house. Yeah, but my point is, yeah, put yourself where you go, where you appreciate it. Put yourself where you love, and put yourself with a group of men who have resources. That's true. I'm so tired so of all true. this black men sex appeal. Yes, they're the most beautiful men in the world. Great. What else you got? We the most beautiful women in the world, but the fact that we done allowed our men to slum and treat us like utter trash on national levels now has even men of value being like. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think, you know, and I think that's, you know, where we'll end all of this, but we definitely have to control the image of black women. Yes. And I think it's more about how we feel about ourselves, like yes. you said, being educated, being property owners, you know, and doing these these things that make us of value then to continue on that same peer pressure award tour that black men are on to impress everybody you know we are good enough we are impressive enough and if we don't end up (laughs) if we don't end up sharing life with some of these nig nogs i still feel like that's better than having to lick somebody's boots Mm. you know whether you 125 or 225 has mm-hmm. nothing to do. Like I said, the hands mm-hmm. that have nurtured us, they have raised us, they have wiped away tears. You know, the doubled over elbow meat that's done made the uh, banana pudding ah! and the and the potato salad and all that. You know, those women have always had value. They had so much value that white men and women had them in their household raising their kids. We didn't never have school shooters. When black women was in the household mm-hmm. raising mm-hmm. white kids, mm-hmm. you know, their kids got out of control and entitled when they started taking over raising them. And, you know, I think the more that we as black women embrace white values like we've watched our men do, the, the more we're losing ourselves and losing our culture. You know, these mm-hmm. are West African body types. You go over to Africa, then women be wrapped up in fabric looking like queens and stuff. Mm-hmm. You go over to India with all mm-hmm. this body, baby, they might worship you. <laughs> right. You know, let right. these men travel down to uh, all these uh, South American states and buy all the pussy they want. I don't care no more. Exactly. You can't, like, 
Mm-hmm. You can't care. Love yourself, but but yeah, we gotta embrace yourself. each other. Yes, so that's the main takeaway. We have to start embracing each other. Yes, and I think a big part of why we don't and why we can't is our own insecurities. Like what you said, nobody ever told you you were fat. You was in a competition in your mind. Yes, yes, with girls that looked the way you thought you should. They weren't getting anything. You weren't getting exactly, exactly. Never do, never do. All these skinny ass white girls are getting this biracial kids that they that their parents have to help them raise. So, mm. well, cuz oh, yes, it's always so awesome when we get together. Yes, <laughs> I feel so blessed to be a part of a family with so many women that I respect and look up to yes. and doing this channel and doing this content really is about how we protect. Each other, protect Absolutely. our image, keep each other safe, uplift each other, and encourage each other. Absolutely. I'm so proud of you. I've never said this to you. Oh, thank so you. So I'm going to say this now. I'm proud of you for being educated, for standing in your identity. Mm-hmm. And even though I know you done had your ups and downs, baby, you know, I know how you were raised. I know what we all have come from and come through and just yeah. generations of women that say it, it stops with me. Yeah. And so yeah. I really respect you for the way you have stood in your womanhood. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, it's not easy, but. Yeah, you know. I know. But I look forward <laughs> to the things that you will do. Thank you. Know? You. you know, so I really respect that and appreciate that. Thank you. Thank about you. you. You know, you. and just knowing that our family is going to continue because of the sacrifices that we as women have made to show you know our children better than that you're a big part of examples that i can show my daughter mm. of what a woman should be yes. and doing and, and be focused on in a generation of you know of the black community where we're not where we should be i think black men are gonna come back around yeah i don't know and i don't want them to come back around when they need us you know after they done just slid mm-hmm. but but i know that the community won't be here without us. It won't be yeah. nothing to come back to without us. So I'm glad to be building a community yes. with a woman like you. I was gonna, I was gonna say, yeah, it is a blessing to be in a family of women that you can lean on and get solid, good, genuine advice from, and it's a blessing. It's, it really it, is. It's a, a blessing. A lot of women don't have that. Yeah. Like as I'm encountering them out in the marketplace, yes, and they have no guidance. They don't have yes. anyone to. And unfortunately, they getting guidance from men. Mm. Mm. Baby, scary. Baby. So yeah, I'm I'm glad that we have what we have and that we're continuing to build our hen house. Yes. With conversations like this, thank you, Wi-Fi's, for sticking in here with us. Yes, you already know what time it is. It is time <laughs> to dismiss this class. So until the next episode, class is now dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>you for sticking around until the very end of this episode if you liked this content then you may want to check out this video right here and if you haven't already for whatever insane reason go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link right here until the next time be unplugged unbothered and unleashed you're not niggas